An easy one to start us off with is, well, the new integrated air and water heater, will it thermosiphon? Secondly, have I re <laughs> reassembled it correctly and will it leak everywhere? No, 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 come on now, confidence. I'm confident it'll work. I shall fire this up and get it running and then turn on the FLIR. We'll look at it, see if it is thermosiphoning and then we'll see how long it takes to heat this entire 10 litres of water up to, brrr, I don't know, 70 degrees. Right, let's do that. Laz, fire up. Should we do it at maximum, maximum attack? Yes, maximum power. Okay, the heater is on maximum attack. And, uh, well, let's fire up the FLIR and see what's happening. Okay, so the water is 10 degrees. Nine point something, we'll call it nine point something. There's a lot of heat there from the exhaust. But I'm hoping that if I just kind of point this here in generation, we'll see hot water start to climb up the pipe. That looks like hot water. I can confirm there is warm water in that pipe and let me try and cooler water in that pipe yep that's definitely that's hot right okay so I will give this 10 minutes and then take another reading and see what's happening in 10 minutes. Okay, so we didn't get into 10 minutes. What we did was we got to two minutes and I can see, well, bubbles, which means it's boiling the water in the base. And uh, you may have heard that, you may have not, but yeah. Yeah, it's doing it in like glugs. So I don't think that counts as therma siphon. Also, I'd like to point out that both pipes at the bottom here are hot. This one's still obviously hotter because the pressure from the water's still got some push on it, but... Nah, there's bubbles coming there. So that's not a proper thermosiphon, there's not enough flow. Which makes sense, I suppose, because it's upside down. There's nowhere... Well, the water's got, the water's got to boil in there. Well, not boil, but there's obviously not enough flow through here. Right, I'm going to just uh, fire the flare back on just now. Ah, uh, unlock, damn it. So, what we're just getting is, well... Uh, one slightly warmer than the other pipe. And we're not really getting a... No, there's not a lot of thermosiphon action going on here. It's just glugging and splutting out boiling water every now and again. Which isn't what you want for your thermosiphon. So, I'm afraid it's a uh, coolant pump only on this one. Shame. Yeah, so that's thermosiphon not so much. No, pump only I'm afraid for this setup. Suppose what should we do now? Well, what we'll do in the next video is set up with a coolant pump and see how long it takes to heat up 10 litres of water. This time we've got our jug, our heater, and the coolant pump this time is plumbed in and wired in. And I've just, right this moment, turned the heater on so it'll actually start up and be running and we'll be ready to film and go quickly. I'm going to grab the flare, point at the jug, Take a temperature reading just now and then once that's on and running we'll turn the pump on and we'll see what kind of flow we get around the system and how long it takes to heat up this 10 litres of water from whatever temperature is just now to, oh, I don't know, 60, 70 degrees, something like that. Fuel pump just kicked in on the heater. 
got the Fleer fired up. So our jug is a balmy 15 degrees at the moment. Am I even in mostly shop? So 15-ish degrees. So like the instruction manual says, we'll let this run for, I don't know, a couple of minutes and then we'll turn the coolant pump on and get it flowing. Where is the coolant pump? Right, right. Lost my, lost my bearings here. Okay, coolant pump's down there. So that says 17 point something degrees. We're just waiting for this to kick over and it being, you know, running, the other running, normal running. I think it, I think it, uh, it, be, it beeps a few times once it's uh, up and doing things. And then we will press the button for the water pump. Okay, that's it. It's now gone into not being on glow plug and it's being running. So if we press and hold this for three seconds, one, two. Okay, the coolant pump is now pumpering. And we should see, well, let me bring it into the coolant pump. Says 15 and oh, it says 15 and 15. Oh, 15, 60. Ah, this camera's slow. All right, let's focus our attention on the jug. Okay, here's the jug. The pump is on. See 18 degrees. I can hear it glugging. No glugging. You know, I can hear pumping action happening in the background. I should say the heater is just on half power because I forgot to turn up the max power. So we're running at half. Although, half of five. You can't really have half of five. It's running on three bars. So we'll just let it run on three just now. Because we started on three, we'll let it run on three. Okay, while that's doing that, while it's being a jug, what we're going to do is come back in 10 minutes again and see what temperature has got up to. Well, according to Google, that was our 10 minutes. And according to the Fleer, the jug is at 33 degrees. What did it start at? Yeah, I'm gonna have to look back at the video. I think it was 17 it started at. So we've gone from 17 to 33 in 10 minutes. Uh, plugged in the, what do you call it? The mirror, it says 37 degrees. So 37, well. Again, remember the FLIR temperature is not super accurate because this is white plastic and not matte black. But that was 10 minutes. So do we give it another 10 minutes and see what we go up to in those 10 minutes? Sure, let's do that. See you in 10. Well, that's another 10 minutes has passed us by. The FLIR is now showing a hot watery temperature of 40... 40 odd... 46? 46? 45? 46? 46? The thermometer thermocouple on the meter says 49. So what's that been? 20... 20 odd minutes? What does this thing say? It says... It's run for 26 minutes, so 20 minutes of heating in six minutes of me dicking about starting, I suppose. 26 minutes, 17 degrees to 49. It's not exactly stellar, is it? It's not really, um, well, that's only 10 liters. What's the average coolant system? I don't know, 10, 15 liters? But then again, we're still making hot air. So if this was in your vehicle, your vehicle would be defrosted and your engine would at least be warm. You're not starting it from cold, but then again, we'll start at 17 degrees. So it'll take even longer to go from less down temperatures to... Anyway. It doesn't thermosiphon. It only works from a pump, which is slightly unfortunate. Not the end of the world, but not great. I was kind of hoping it would have thermosiphoned, but it doesn't seem to want to do it. 50 degrees isn't terrible. 
And like I say, we're still, we're still heating air, we're still heating up whatever vehicle or unit you put in. They're still, the exhaust still hot though, there's still more heat that we can get out of this. We could fit this exhaust better, put my EGR cooler adaption on and get even more heat out again, which we will try in the future. But for just now, I'm calling it. That'll do, turn it off. Let's stop that. So, no to thermosiphon, yes to coolant pump, and you guys can do maths yourselves. Leave it in the comments down below how many watts or joules or whatever energy format you want to use was that to go from 17 degrees to 50. We'll call it 50. 17 to 50 in 20 minutes. You watch joules that yourselves. Thanks for watching, guys.